I'm Vulture Culture. This is the Kawhi R53. This is a very special Japanese only release uh, version of the R50. And what is so cool about this is nowadays you see people who modify R100s and R50s all the time so that they can have multiple EPROMs in it. So what the EPROMs are is essentially chips that have the sounds of the drums burned in on them and and R50 came with this original set. Then they released the uh, R50E, which had these electronic drums. And that's what you were just hearing. And if it sounds familiar to you, that's because all of the early ra Wax Tracks records um, from bands like Ministry, KMFDM, Front 242, Frontline Assembly, um, they all used this drum machine or the R50E. And uh, what's so cool about these drum machines is, like I said, you could swap out these EPROMs. Well, there's been a legend, a rumor, a mysterious calling on the internet that I didn't believe that this drum machine even existed, where they said that there was a special Japanese-only release of this drum machine where you could have all three of the EPROMs in it. So normally you have to modify one of these drum machines and like drill some holes and solder some shit to be actual to actually put everything together and get different sounds. But with this one, you can actually just, without modifying it at all, you can use all three of the different sounds so let me show you real quick if i go and just uh go to call pattern zero and press start you can hear these drum sounds yeah it's instant instant 90s industrial 40 thieves right now if i just turn this off and i turn it back on and i hold down pad two we get a completely different sound Right, turn it back off, hold pad three when I boot it, and now we have another sound. And you don't need to do anything. So what's so special about this is, like I said, I didn't think this thing existed. In fact, when you do searches for this online, one of the first things that pops up is people saying, I've never seen one. It's rumored to exist. Kawhi does not mention it anywhere on their website. Um, but some people claimed it existed. All of a sudden, one day when I was perusing uh, Reverb, I saw this one mysteriously occurred in Austin, Texas. And I was like, I got to get it just because I love that early industrial sound. I don't know if everybody knows this band, but one of my favorite groups from the later 80s is Microchip League. And when I hear this, I, I have no evidence that they use this drum machine, but it has that instant, like what 40 Thieves was saying, like industrial sound. Um, if it has swing, give it a little. So the way we can do that is go to swing here, swing pattern zero, zero, hit enter, and then we can uh, move. So right now it's saying all, and then we can pick eighth or 16th notes. So if we go to 16th, we've got that, and then we can control the amount we want. So I'm gonna just give it a little bit of swing so you guys can hear that. Swing is ready. And then I guess we have to go back to call pattern, stop. Okay, press enter. Call pattern zero, zero, and let's try it again. There we go, a little bit of swing. Now, once you've swung something on this drum machine, as I understand it, there's no going back. Like, you can't get it back to normal, but you can increase the swing. So if I go to swing again, press enter, enter 16th, and then we can take it up to 67%, enter, swing ready. Let's go ahead and see how that sounds. That's really swung, right? We're starting to really get that down for the hell of it while we're here. Let's go ahead and enter 16th, bring it up to 75%, enter. Kind of, I don't hear too much of a difference there. Let's go ahead and try and take it all the way. Enter 16th. Oh, I guess that's as much as we can get. Okay, so that's how that sounds. Now, if I turn it back off, hold down pad one, turn it back on, 
and go. I can't tell if that's swung. Let's go ahead and try and see. Enter, enter 16th, and we'll go for 67 again. See what happens. Yeah, sounds about right, right? Super cool. So anyways, um, one of the things that's really special about this is, like I said, the fact that it has that instant, uh, you'll just immediately hear that sound from the 80s and into the early 90s, that nostalgic industrial EBM sound. And that's not for everybody, but if you listen to this music, then you recognize it immediately. Um, ben, welcome to the stream. Um, New Order's 1963. Interesting. I didn't know that. I was under the impression that New Order mostly used like the Oberheim stuff. So that's a really cool fact. Thank you for letting me know. Welcome. <laughs> I'm always impressed by how much the viewers of this channel know, and I'm never under any impression that I am the smartest person in the room when it comes to any of this stuff. Uh, I am very dumb. Okay, see, I didn't even mean to do that. Okay, so if I go to pad over here, we can check out different presets that we have um, to check out different sounds. So here's preset one. Let's just check them out vanilla and this is the by holding down pad one this is the r50e the electronic drums which are the, the industrial ones i think the r fit the r100 drums sound good too but um you know for me this is definitely the eprom that i'm most excited about so uh kit number one kind of uh little gritty these are 12-bit drums by the way which i think is part of what makes it have that sound right is that they're not pristine uh cd quality audio but they were better than earlier drum machines that were digital that sounded pretty bad arguably you know some of those drum machines like the lindrum were very famous for songs like um kate kate bush's running up that hill prince used it. everybody used it so it's a very iconic sound they sounded great given their limitations right but this is sort of a middle ground and my favorite category, vintage digital, where we're transitioning out of the dark ages of 8-bit and we're moving in to the, uh, maybe the uh, too pristine, too clean, too much high end of the 90s when we got to, you know, CD quality samples and everything where everything just became a rompler and a workstation and, and terrible. So uh, this to me is a super special little moment in history. So anyways, kick drum. That snare though, right? One thing I want you to pay attention to, and this is interesting to me, is just like the incredible amount of high end and snap that this Tom has. Like I, I'm blinking every time that thing hits. So also you can choke uh, groups. Everybody likes a good choke. So you can hear that when I moderately long sample, but if I press pad nine, the closed hi-hat, it'll choke up that sample out. Right? So you can get that sort of natural, um, like a real drum kit would sound. I think later on, uh, People stopped worrying about that so much, but this is still from the era where, at least in principle, these uh, drum machines were designed to replicate real drums to a certain extent. Nice, like, uh, Simmons sort of uh, disco tom, right? And you'll notice, if you have headphones on or uh, two speakers, <laughs> that there are, you can pan each sound, right? We got a nice uh, crash symbol, like a lot of crash symbols from the 80s because sample size is difficult or eats up a lot. They had to make the sample kind of short. So it's not as bad as a 909 where the sample just stops, right? But it's still, it does stop, right? Just maybe a little bit longer than a 909. Um, continue to drink. Uh, moving on to kit number two here. 
Oh yeah, that to me, that gated drum sound, sort of blurry from the 12-bit uh, D to A, but it just has that sound uh, that I immediately think of those bands. Massive. Now, there's also like flanging and stuff that you can do in here, which I'm wondering if is on that sound because it has almost the texture of a smeared transient, you know? When you hear that, that big ass gated snare, you almost hear like two hits real close back to back. Pet Shop Boys drum, yes. Nice laser sound, little laser percussion. More hi-hats. Let's just see real quick the difference between one and two. No difference. We got some uh, fake coming in the air tonight type drums going on. Um, yeah, Skinny Puppy is another one of those bands that use this. I believe. Uh, don't quote me on anything because I hate spreading misinformation, but at the same time, I just fucking... Uh, to just spew shit from my mouth all the time. Machine Storm, welcome. See, there you can really hear the flanging effect. Um, Devastation's got an XD5, which is K4 synth engine with drum PCM samples. Um, I bet there might be, but at the same time, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there weren't just because Kawhi was probably trying to take it. That was their first, the K4, for those of you who aren't on their Kawhi history, was the first 16-bit, uh, I believe, synth they put out. So they were probably trying to update everything to that. Um, but yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll get into some actual programming later uh, for funsies here. Um, moving on to kit three. That fucker. I love how short those samples are. So for years, I've been making my kick drums very short. And um, even if you go way back on this channel, I think if you go to uh, youtube.com at Vulture Culture, you'll see uh, this intro to synth pop in industrial, or I'm sorry, EBM and synth pop song that I did with Miss FD. The whole section on how I did the drums for the song, um, what is it, uh, Ashes of Stars, and it's like, you can see that I'm just trying to trim those samples until they're as short as possible. For one thing, it makes it super snappy, so you can really like punch that drum into a limiter, and you'll still have room in your mix, whereas if you have like a big ass long 808 and you try to force that thing up front, it's just going to blow out the whole mix. Um, so I love these super tight samples, and it's really fun to go all the way back in time to when this drum machine came out in the late 80s, and I think it was 85, 86, something like that. And um, this thing just, oh, so good. Super lows. Analog Orchestra, welcome to the stream. How's it going? Um, yes, so I've got a K3 and a K1 right behind me. Really want to get a K4 at some point. In fact, we had one of the sound designers for Kwai on the stream a while back. Would be a lot of fun. I just, um, I've got a really nice synth collection right now. And I don't, right, I'm like kind of in this weird space where I'm like, I don't really want to get anything else that will fuck up the feng shui of what I've got going. Having said that, I do think it's probably inevitable that I'm going to uh, do that at some point. But we'll see. Uh Definitely a big Kawhi fan, though. I used to have the K5000S. I sold that recently, which I'm sad about. Probably the synth I'm most sad about selling, but I just, you know, you can't keep buying synths and not selling some of them, right? So we got these kind of two different snares. I can't tell if that's supposed to be a wood block or is a finger snap. It, again, super snappy. I'm interested to know, because this thing doesn't have a compressor built into it, if they like really pre-compressed these samples, because they have like a stupid amount of snap on them. Nice little fake clap sound. Little timpanies. Awesome. Moving on to preset kit number four. 
that uh, should be familiar. <laughs> so, yeah, we've got sort of these, uh, what made the R50e EPROM special is we've first off got this great um, slap bass sample that was probably used on a shitload of industrial. Can you increase, increase the tail on some of these? Uh, mayhaps. So there's actually in here, we'll get into it in a second, but you can adjust the gate of every sample. Um, so we're going to hit that in a second here. Um, but in, for instance, on this, what was it? This one, pad six here. Let's see if I can, well, what we could do is we could pull up the sample later and see if the, if we open the gate up further, if there's more of that sample that's being cut off right now. Um, we shall see. Uh, uh, what is it? Yamaha drum pad, same era. Yes. Yeah, so, like, I really want to get a RY30 at some point. Until I realized that you can get an EPROM of the RY30 sounds on the Kawaii. And um, that's super cool. So, I'm actually planning on buying a bunch of EPROMs for this thing and maybe doing a follow up stream, checking out some of the other stuff, um, drumulators. SP-12000, stuff like that. I think you can get the Lindrums, but the one I was most interested in uh, just off the top was the RY30 because that kind of has a little bit of that industrial thing. Maybe even the R8 kind of has that a bit too. Uh, it would be cool if you put out a sample pack of this, maybe even just one-hit wave samples. 40 Thieves, you've read my mind. That's definitely one of the reasons I got this was because I want to, at some point, hopefully, make some sort of either sample pack or maybe even a simple VST instrument that would enable you to sort of do a little bit of uh, sample plus synthesis when it comes to drums. So that might be a thing that comes out at some point on the channel. You heard it here first. Please do not quote me on that, though, because, uh, you know, I try not to make too many promises, right? But I'm definitely going to do something like that. Just like I'm going to release, when I get it done, all of my Roland D50 sounds for free to members of this channel, which, by the way, $5 a month, hook your boy up, you know, since cost money. <laughs> Something to consider. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know what you guys think about sample packs. I don't want to get too far off on that topic while we're talking about this, in case someone's watching this stream and they're just to hear about this and they don't give a fuck about anything else. But... Um, there definitely could the VC one. That's awesome. Um, there definitely I could put out sam more sample packs if that's something you guys are interested in. Um, if that would be a cool thing for me to put out, uh, I would love to do that. So no reason not to. But at the same time, um, I also have considered what about doing uh, more polished VST instruments instead of just wave samples. I don't know what would be better for you guys. You let me know. Maybe we'll make a post. Uh, we can vote on it. Anyways, so then we have eight user banks here. And what's super interesting about these is because of the architecture of the R50, you don't necessarily, how do I say this? Um, as you change EPROMs, the kits and stuff are all saved. So you might have noticed when we did the intro where we checked out each of the different EPROMs, I hope I'm saying that word right, uh, that it was playing the same pattern. So the patterns are not per EPROM, right? So when you change EPROMs, you change everything, all of the samples in the thing. But what you don't change is all of the, I guess like, uh, not preset, but what's the word I'm looking for? All of the parameters, that's the word, uh, that are in here. So like if on one of these kits, you tuned the kick drum down. So what we could do is hit enter pad one and we could change the sample. So that's our short sample. And we can change the level. What the fuck is AC? I don't think I've ever seen that before. The tune. You get really crazy with it. Uh, the panning, right now it's dead center. The gate here, so if we increase the gate, oh, that's tightening it up. So in this case, on this sample, um, Dub, we can see that the gate is already all the way open, but we could actually tighten it up further.
and we, there's a pretty audible click at the end there so it's not a super wonderful gate but it's probably useful more on the snare drums for getting that reverb in control based off of tempo anyways so that's that sample right that's on we let's uh go enter and we could delay that so that like sets that back we've got flanger so let's just increase that real quick You know what's interesting about the flanger too is it's like the position of the flanger does the same thing every time. So, oh wait, maybe it doesn't. Oh yeah, wait. So on flanger one, you always get that sound. On flanger two, maybe that's what you want. You know, that little wah at the end there, it's definitely interesting for sure. Um, so anyways, let's say we leave that on too for the fun of it. So. That sounds massive. So that's there on user one. I'm going to turn it off and then turn on pad two or hold down pad two. This is loading up the R50, uh, I'm sorry, the R100 drum samples. If I go to pad and move over to user one, you'll hear that we have a different drum sample now, but it's still got the tuning in the flanger. So if I go uh, enter, and then we could go here and then the tune and tune it back up and turn the gate's pretty aggressive let's turn the flanger off now we've got that sound right let's go uh i, I quite like though no i'm not trying to do that let's go back pad user one enter let's change the tuning and you can hear that Nyquist frequency coming in because again it's 12-bit samples right so turning it off holding pad three down as I go back on you don't have to modify it. it's so nice you don't have to drill any holes anything it just works and then pad move over to user one again am I going too quick I think everybody's on the same page as me. You guys are all smarter than me, so like, but if I'm going too quick or anybody has any questions, let me know, okay? So now we've got a different drum sample. And again, I guess I'm just illustrating the fact that although it's a different sample in that pad slot, it still responds to the parameters that we set up earlier, for better or worse. That's sort of the nature of this thing. And because... Not everything standardized, like so for instance, the R100 rock kit or the R50 jazz kit has a different set of samples that doesn't have the slap bass drum or the orchestra hit from the R50E. You just get different results, right? Like it's if you program a pattern and that's a shaker on one EPROM, but it's a bass line on another, you can't really do anything about that um, for better or worse. Okay, how are we doing so far? What's up, Wes? How's it going? Let's go ahead and turn it back off. Hold down pad one and turn it back on. Now, why don't we hear how some of this sounds on its own? So I showed you very quickly in the intro how you can do a live loop real-time recording with this where it's got this nice little uh, metronome in the background and, you know, sort of what you would expect, right? But you can also step record with this, which I may or may not show. <laughs> I'm not necessarily um, into step recording. Yo, by the way, Tony Argo, shout outs to you. How's it going? One of our newest members. Um, but what you can also do is just hear the preset patterns that are in here. So we're back to, back to the, uh, the initialized R50E industrial drum Eprom. If I go to pads here, why don't we pick which kit we like the best? I like that one just because it's silly. It's between preset four and two for me. Do you guys have a preference? I'll go with whoever shouts it out in the chat first. Um, do you guys have a preference on if we go four or three? Why don't we uh, figure that out real quick? Versus, let's actually go to just because we've got more drums going on here. 
I think when I met you, Wesley, so for those of you guys who don't know, which would be everybody except for me and Wesley, I was working out at the gym here in dark Lake Worth Beach, and it was like after I got off a shift bartending, and Wesley was there, and I think you were wearing a Frontline Assembly shirt, uh, and I was like, I'm going to say hi to this dude, because how often in the wild do you see a motherfucker wearing a Frontline Assembly shirt? I was like, hey, what's up? Wesley's still hanging out years later, so that's super cool. And of course, what's so special about that is this is the early Frontline Assembly drum machine, I think. It's hard to say exactly what drums were used on watch, which records, um, but Wax Tracks records heavily featured this drum machine and sort of is the sound of those early ministry records and stuff, though. Um, so anyways, let's go ahead and use preset two. It's probably optimal just because it is um, got the most there, whereas preset four spends a lot of time with those chromatic elements. So that's cool. Now we can go to call pattern, I think. How do I get out of here? Whoa, <laughs> call pattern. And what we can do is step through these and the first 50 are um, user presets, right? But then from 50 to 99 are uh, the presets of the drum machine. So by using the left and right arrows, we can go uh, in increment between each one. So pattern nine, pattern 10, whatever. But we can also jump 10 by hitting the up and down arrows. So let's go ahead and call pattern 50. We can go in here to tempo and adjust the tempo. Yo, 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 Anonymous, thank you for the $6.66 donation. It says, great stuff here. I appreciate what you're doing for the vintage synthesizer community. I'm a sound designer and producer. I also have a lot of analog synthesizers. Really enjoying your channel. Devil Horns, thank you very much, whoever you are out there. I appreciate it. And um, I'm just glad someone cares about this stuff. I'm a nerd for this type of thing. Um, and I think it's super cool that we've got this community. And it's also awesome that we get to do this live stream every uh, Wednesday night at nine and it, it's like always growing and like I, I was blown away by it. this week in particular how many great comments I got on my videos of people just being so positive and thoughtful and constructive and you always hear like people complaining about YouTube comments and of course I get a couple of them too that occasionally fuck with me really bad but the truth is for every bad comment, I get like a hundred great ones where I'm like, these people are so insightful and know more about this shit than I do. And it's just really great. So anyways, anonymous, whoever you're out there, your genitals must be superior. Let's check out some more stuff here. Um, so we could just go back to call pattern and move to 51 and hear all that sounds. And you'll notice that's like a fill. That's a fill too. But, that is one seriously perverted yo, dish. I didn't see anything occur. Oh, maybe that's just like a delay of the sample. Ah, cool, Jamie. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, sometimes people are like, I don't know how to make it not unanonymous as well. So, yeah. That's so awesome. By the way, I'd like to sample like a loop of just that hi-hat, you know? Um, so, as you move these arrows, what it lets you do is basically like string together patterns. So, and you don't have to go in any order too. You could go, you know, and now it's going to go from 53 to 58, right? But anyways, we'll go back to, uh, ooh, dude, a little bit of flange in there. So by the way, that's another sort of thing to think about when we're talking about these way you can put beats together here. With, um, when you're doing real-time recording, you're sort of stuck, uh, unless you edit it. Does it have solos and mutes? That's a great question. I do have the manual pulled up, uh, so remind me to tackle that in a bit when we get to the I've run out of interesting info to talk about <laughs> section dub, because uh, I feel like it should, but I don't really know. It does have, by the way, here, I'll just tilt this up. Hopefully you guys can see this without knocking my camera over. It does have individual outs. Um, I, thought, <laughs> I thought it had individual outs. Oh, it does. It's got 
Um, it does, but I don't think it has all of them. Like, so it doesn't have eight individual outs. So you sort of have to go in here and route what you want, but you could process stuff separately. So a way you could do that is say, um, route the kick and the snare to one out and then the hi-hats to another out and then everything else to a third out, it looks like on the back. And then on a mixer, you could control the faders, right? Um, to be able to do that. But anyways, You'll notice there's some flanging on those hits in there, and I don't know if it's there all the time, though, which is super cool, and it's per step, right? So the tuning can be per step as well. So you can actually use, um, like, write in the tuning for each hit, which is super cool. Anyways, let's keep going here. Oh, you know what? I shouldn't have worried too much about the, um, which, which of the, uh, ep kits we're using, because I guess that's programmed in here, too. So let's just go through this. There we go. Plenty of swing on that motherfucker. And here, it'll tell you how many bars you've got to work with. There we go. Now all we need to do is add like a bass drum roll and it's gonna have that, uh, that like Ministry Thieves feel, right? We could turn it down even more if we wanted to take it like really low. Or like way the fuck up, right? Anyways, call pattern. Let's enter, turn that off. Keep moving. So there's, I don't think there's a fill button. I think you just have to kind of like, there is a song mode. So you could write one pattern and then uh, uh, have a fill pattern. And the patterns can be different bar lengths, right? So you could have one pattern that's, uh, say, four bars, and then program a fill in, or you could have like just a simple pattern of one one, and then move to another uh, pattern that is just one bar as well, but only play it once, right? So play this one three times. I did a terrible job of explaining that. Play this pattern three times and then do a fill and then move on. Right? So you can do sort of stuff like that. I, know, I don't know if I explained that well. But in the song mode, you can write out like what the um, what the order of patterns are and how many times each one plays. And you could do that and create a whole live set out of that. So you could hypothetically put together a 30 minute or hour live set of drums here and that's a thing you could do. Yes, yeah, so FLA and Puppy were definitely use the Emus quite a bit too, and the Akai S900 for sure. So this is a good example of a um, a <laughs> drum beat that I do not think had the R50E in mind when they wrote it, right? I mean, doesn't that just have that sort of like 90s, 80s thing? Yeah, the orchestra hits are so good, Mighty Pinto. How's it going, my friend? Nice little kind of polyrhythmic thing going on there. Play Show Me Your Spine by PTP. Yeah, the orchestra samples are particularly amazing or cringe, depending on your personal taste. Yeah, so this is actually the drum machine that Al Jorgensen was using for the first couple of Ministry records, which is why it 
it has that sound and why I bought it, by the way. Uh, I'm almost wondering if someone will, uh, is Paula Abdul's forever your girl? Yeah, it's, it's, I'm, I hope someone out there hears a beat and they comment like, yo, that was this song from this whatever, you know? Wow. Wait, let's go back. That was crazy. <laughs> That's, that is the craziest fill. Like the flanger kicks in. Really off. Wesley, I've never discussed um, how much I paid for drum machines just because I know some people actually like... Um, I will say it was more than that, Tony, but because I just bought this, I don't want anybody to feel like they got screwed um, by anything. Let me see here real quick. Um, well, worry about that later. You can see some of these are more meant to be fills than main beats. Like this is definitely a, uh, you know, something you could have as like the background for your track. Let's bring this down a little bit. Bring into sexual range, 106. I love slow tempos. I didn't mean to do that. Right, but you could bring it back. And then now we're back in. So what I was trying to say is. Let's say we started the uh, groove right on the following one. So one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, and I hit to 88. Now it will play that drum fill. Now we're back to 89, right? You see what I'm trying to do there? And you can program all of that out in the song mode. I'm probably not going to cover that stream just because I'm not sure anybody really, like, if by the time you're decided you want to buy one of these you should just read that part of the manual manual super good super easy to get through um yeah walter that's super cool so i believe the midi mixer is useful in particular for the k1 um but it basically gives you a bunch of faders with which you can uh modify parameters and it's not that different from what Dubstation is doing with his SY77 and that Novation um, MIDI controller that al allows you to sort of uh, help with the programming and stuff. I've thought about getting one for the K1, but, you know, it's just too much gear out there, right? You gotta make decisions. Nowadays, a lot of what I buy is actually based more on, like, w what I think you guys would like to check out. Oh, that is sexual right there. Oh, oh, fuck, that's amazing. You'll notice that the laser is being panned around. So per hit, it's going back and forth. That beat <laughs> fuck shit up. Oh my God, I want a loop of that. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's about as good as it gets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very pretty hate machine vibes. Although I don't think they used one of these for hate machine. Um, still, that, that low kick just fucking fuck shit up. Yeah. I love that that's the end. That's the last beat, right? Okay. I'll go through them faster this time, but just because I think it's important for me to actually demo everything when I do these videos so that, you know, if this is the type of thing you want to spend your money on, you've lis listened to this video so far. I'm not going to cover the jazz section. I feel like that's for somebody else, right? But the legacy of this thing is the... Um, 
the the industrial stuff. But let's pull up pattern 50 again. Oh, I'm sorry. Should I do pad two? Pad two, I believe, is the R100 rock drum kit. So let's just hit that again. We will cover all of those patterns. But so it's the exact same patterns, but with different with a different EPROM. So now we're hearing how the R100 drums sound. Pretty dope, honestly. Oh, dude, that's fucking awesome. Ooh. Okay, so I feel like these drum patterns might have been made for R100 because they, they make a lot more sense here. Dude. Yeah, this is what's up. I love how that clap in particular has that like lo-fi... Uh, I don't even know if the Lindrum had a clap on it, but if it did, it sounded like this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so whether you like lo-fi, but I mean, these drums, they slap. Like, this is up in this motherfucker. All right, guys, I, I, I'm hearing you guys loud and clear. I've got to make some uh, sample packs of this EPROM. Mm. <laughs> the bossa nova beat, right? Oh! Doesn't it kind of remind you of... Um, you know what that sounds like to me is um, the Bowser, Bowser, Bowser boss music from uh, Super Mario 64. The samples, anyways. Oh, that's awesome, Jamie. Yes, it is very different, Walter. Oh, it's just like the unreal snap of these drums. Like, they're just like so in your face. These are the stock drums, Zozilla the Great. Also, by the way, welcome to the stream. So these are, I covered this earlier, but since we're just getting here, um, the R50E is a rare, or sorry, R53 is a rare Japanese only release of the R50 series. So there was the, R5, uh, the R100, the R50, and the R50E. And what's special about this drum machine is without having to modify it whatsoever, you have all three of those EPROMs in here. And so these are actually just the stock R100 sounds, which I think are also very industrial. I mean, they fuck around. Mm. Hey, Dave, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Welcome to the stream. Oh. I mean, it's just like fucking smacks you in the goddamn skull. Yeah, it sounds like the compression is crazy. On the last kick, was that on pattern 80? That one or back one? Oh, that, yeah. I love that shit, right? There was our boy. Wait, this is like the best one. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Is it possible to remove the preset, the symbol? Let's see. I've now got that question tw twice, so I feel like I need to look it up. I got the manual here. 
and see if there's a good way to do that. So give me a second while we check out some of the rest of these. Well, there might be a way to do it, but not a very great way. Let me see. Let's see. Do I have a let, so one way we could do it? Let's say let's find a different pattern too. By the way, uh, let's find a. I want to find a decent one. Let's go back to the. Uh, there was that badass one a few back. Also, how's it going, Emmanuel? I agree, Rick. Oh my god, yeah. I can only imagine Dub. I want to get back to that badass. Where was that sick industrial one? Did I skip it? I feel like I skipped it somewhere in here. Okay, so I love that, but the crash or whatever is going on in there is really annoying. So if we go to Mixer here, and we can see here, we can go through, what is this? You can adjust the um, the level of each individual sample. So if we could find that sample, which I suppose we could, so I'm gonna stop the pattern, and then I'm gonna go to the pads and go to user one, We'll go to that, pad, uh, enter, and change the sample. We'll try to find that crash. Can't tell if it was that. There it is, PC 23. So anyways, uh, going back to the drums here, so I'll play the pattern again. If I go to PC31, 23 and bring it down, that's a global, we can mute it actually, all the way and pull that out if we wanted to. So that would be a good way to be able to do that. Um, but kludgy, right? And plus, I believe in the mixer mode, this is gonna be the same even if we used it you know, anywhere else, right? So any other sample that we're using that uses that, it's turned the volume off there too. Isn't this on the last UVI release also? I believe so, Zazilla. I am not sure I don't have it. Um, I pay for everything, so UVI definitely didn't send it to me for free. I would let you know. That would be awesome if they did, but they didn't. Um, but it's set from the marketing of the UVI, it does mention that it's got the R100 and R50 series samples in it. Will it have everything? I don't know. I'm not a, a UVI guy. I've never actually used any of their products, but a lot of people love them. So, uh, and I think it's awesome that they are that. Yes, by muting the specific pad, let me see if I can do something like that too. I'm gonna keep looking around here while we go check out some more patterns. Anyway, okay, enter. And you control the pan level, all sorts of stuff here. And we could just keep going. Why don't I, while we're just trying to figure this out, go back to pattern 50, turn it off and try it with the jazz patterns just while I'm glancing through the manual. I guess that was stupid of me. You can change the pan of each. Yes, you can. Let's see. I'm looking through the manual right now, trying to power read, so let's see. While we're using, uh, so th these are the jazz patterns here.
I wouldn't be surprised if there is an answer, but of course there's always going to be a question that someone asked that I wasn't prepared for uh, live. So let me see if I can just figure this out real quick. Let's see. Irish Musico, welcome to the stream. How's it going? I'm currently seeking answers. So I I'm in the... See, I don't know if there's a way to, like, just mute a certain section of a, of a thing live, right? Like, hold down and just mute one... one thing. Because I don't think the designers of this... You can overdub preset patterns, erasing... I think they didn't anticipate that. I will be happy to, if someone knows how to do this live, like hear a pattern like this and just take out one element, I'd be happy to pin it in the comments of this video. But, um, just, I, I can power read pretty good and there doesn't appear to be anything in the manual that talks about like just temporarily muting a uh, pattern. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't see it. Like I said, if you wanted to make like a sample and just use part of the loop or whatever, you could go into the mixer, turn something off and then turn it back on, right? That would be a thing you could do. But um, like flam or roll, I also haven't seen any of that. I could definitely check that out again. Just see if I'm missing anything here, but I don't think so. But you can, when you're step editing, get really granular with it. So it's really like, I guess the answer, Dub, um, is that, oh my God, wait, wait, wait. That's adorable. Um, the way that this thing is going to give you the most flexibility is by designing your own patterns with the step recording. Because you can do like per hit flange, stuff like that. Oh, so we got a nice little jazz one here. Finally, something for the jazz EPROM. But yeah, so there's a lot you can do. Oh yeah. There we are. That's sexual. Hmm. That would be great. Just put a big ass kick drum underneath that. There you got tropical house music right there. But yeah, so the I think the way that you get the most out of this is to um, really go in and do the granular editing as you're making a pattern. Um, but as far as like if we wanted to sample just the way something is, you know, like and create a loop, we're kind of out of luck. Another thing is, is that um, these pads are not velocity sensitive. So if you want velocity sensitive pads, the R100 does have them, but it's only got six pads instead of eight, and this thing is eight note polyphonic, meaning that until all eight notes are playing, it's still going to, there's not gonna be any voice stealing, which is important when it comes to something like a crash cymbal that's gonna take a while. You want that extra polyphony. Um, so that's a, an advantage of the R50, 50E, and 53 that I have here. Oh my god. The magic. This is Gwen's <laughs> Fay music. Oh my god. Can handle lo-fi to new wave to house. Yes, it absolutely does. Um <laughs> I love when <laughs> I love these ones that are like the pattern does not make sense with the drum kit. Such a great sound. Love that pattern. So anyways, if you guys want me to, uh, stop, stop. <laughs> if you guys want me to make some samples of this, I will, and I'll make them available to everyone in the member section, which by the way, we have some new members, which is awesome. I appreciate everybody who supports me. Five bucks a week. 
Oh, I'm so, not a week. Jesus Christ. I'm the worst promo person of all time. I am so sorry. Not $5 a week, $5 a month. The cup of a price of coffee at Starbucks. I cannot speak right now for the life of me. For the price of one cup of Starbucks coffee. At, actually, I think they probably cost more than that now, right? Um, y'all can hook your boy up and uh, say thank you for everything I do. And it sounds like everybody wants me to sample this. So guess what? That's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to make those samples free to everybody who's a member of this channel. Let me just commit to that right now. So anything else in the future, I will do. It would be super cool to make some sort of drum VST out of this. But in the meantime, we're going to do the R53 samples for free for all y'all motherfuckers. You know why? Because I love you. <laughs> uh, so anyways, let's reset go back turn it off hold down pad one industrial drums fuck it i actually want to check out because i've been mostly just listening to the pad one stuff let's go ahead and pad one stuff the industrial eprom the r50e eprom let's go check out the r100 because actually the gated shit i thought sounded great now let's go i guess we'll probably have to do both of them now that i'm thinking about it but let's go ahead and make our own kit here so we've got Let's go into user one, PC3 here. I'm gonna just go and make sure, I forgot what AC stands for. Let me look that up real quick. Uh, accent, that's what it means. So the accent amount, it can actually be higher or lower than the level setting. So what's interesting about that is that it looks like on this one that the accent amount is actually lower. See, I don't know if that's adding to it or not, because again, accent is something that comes into play on step editing. I guess you could do it by holding down the accent button as you're playing too. Something to think about. But anyways, I want to leave this kind of neutral. Leave the tune kind of in the middle there, pan in the middle, gate zero, delay zero. By the way, let me just show you what delay does. Oh, so it kind of adds like an extra copy. So you can get that. Yes, I'm glad all of y'all like that. Um, you get sort of like a that double hit thing I was talking about earlier. We'll turn that off for now. Flange again. I like that it's always the same, no matter what. So what I want to do is just go through all of the samples here, kind of neutral, right? Um, and then go through and actually, you know, we can talk about some of the things here. So I think this has 28 samples or something like that. So like a really tight, kind of um, dark, kind of distorted kick drum. There she is. And I can't help myself. Let's tune this down. I love low tune drums. So. Oh. Oh, you can hear that little metallic whistle at the top of the drum sample. What that is, is that we've tuned the drum down low enough that that cutoff point of what could possibly be sampled, which in technical terms is called the Nyquist frequency, is now audible. And it's just a, a famous sort of sound. Oh. oh, somewhere around there, it's just fucking nasty. So good. All right, tune back up. That's normal. Honestly, kind of boring. <laughs> um, moving on to the next kick. Super, super thin, actually. So we got some uh, hat stuff, kind of tambourine type vibes. I can't help it. Let's tune it down. I want to know if we can get sort of like a Proteus Infinite One type sound. Unfortunately, you can't. You'd have to tune it a lot lower to get that golden eye Proteus sound. There's our snare, right? And this is where I think the gating is big. So by shortening that gate, we get that real fucking famous 
gated snare sound. We could get it really short, and this is no gate. I think it sounds good. Oh, this is interesting, too. I noticed this earlier. Gate 1 actually trims off some of the front of the sound. Versus. So that chops off the front. That's more of your, like, 80s snare thing. And that's very short. Okay. And then, yeah, let's, fuck. Let's go to the delay. So that's where you can hear that phasing and double hit by increasing some delay. So that's a thing you can do. I, I don't know about that one. Maybe it's cool on things that aren't kicks and snares. I'm a little too much of a uh, phase snob to, uh, you know, use that personally, but some people might like it. Um, got a nice, like, sort of, uh, what do I call that, rim shot? Oh, my God. The, the, the amount of snap on that motherfucker. That is so fucked up. Let's tune it down. <laughs> it almost, the, the harmonics almost sound like an orchestra hit. There's so much shit in there. That's a little too low. The, the amount of smack on that is stupid. Oh, so good. Anyways, jumping back to it. What do you call that? Cowbell? Little conga? Yeah, it is like reverse-ish. <laughs> I can't use that word. Reverse-ish. Got some nice rock drums. Little uh, choked ride hit. Choked crash. Hi-hat. Open hat. N not as choked crash. I don't know how to describe that sound. It's not quite a clap and it's not quite a snare. That's your wood block. ADSR or something? No, we don't have shit. <laughs> what we have is that gate length. That's about it. Little shaker. Conga again? Bongo? Less choked ride symbol. China? That's the China. What do you... Pembala? What do you call that sound? What, what would one refer to that as? Oh, and then we have some triggers. So this is super cool too, by the way. Might be useful to someone like Dubstation who's much cooler than I am. Uh, you can actually route eight individual triggers out of this thing um, and to control other things. So if you had like other drum machines, you can actually program a pattern that has up to eight separate triggers in there. That's cool. Um, not necessarily for us, but it's cool, right? So anyways, we've done that. Let's turn it off and go back to the electronic drums and hear what we have. So going into pad and then moving over to user one and I just want to, um, no, user one, enter and see if all of the stuff is the same. It looks like it is all zeroed out. And now we can go through all of the samples again. The timpani, was that a timpani? That was the new edition clap. I don't know that one actually. Uh, it was a high-pitched timpani. Okay, so we've got some timpani drums in here, I suppose. Um, that sounds pretty lame to me, actually, but let's tune it down. It's almost like a tom sample. But it's super cool. All right, let's keep going. So we've got another gated kick, but it's not as gangster as the other one. But I bet tune down it would be cool. Let's go ahead and do that too. Why not? We're here. 
Yeah, somewhere around here, it's like. I mean, that sounds pretty gangster in tune the tune all the way down. Cool, but it doesn't have the same snap, honestly, as the rock drums. I'm surprised by that. And again, you can almost hear like uh, an orchestra hit level samples in there or, you know, like the harmonics. I don't know if you guys are hearing what I'm hearing. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. Another kick. That's that incra crazy high tom snap that we heard earlier. Try to make the uh, beat from uh, Nine Inch Nails down in it. Yes, it is very close. Do I have TC's nonlinear reverb? I do not. Uh, although it's probably awesome. I use Valhalla for everything. On this, uh, no real need to put reverb on it yet, but... That's surprising to me because it actually sounds like it has some delay on it, but it doesn't. It, but it has like a little smeared transient. Anyways, let's bring it down. I can't help myself. I'm sorry, guys. I just love the sound of like that Nyquist frequency creeping in. That's where it's awesome. Love that. Oh, we should tune it up. Okay. Again, sort of halfway between a snare and a clap. That's like such a famous sound right there. What, what song does that remind me of? It's like some sort of R&B or pop song from the 90s. Just has that sound. Here we get these very electronic sounding um, drums. Very Simmons, you know, Disco Tommy type thing, but not completely. The oh, there we go. Nice gated reverb, real tom. A lot of room tone to it. Uh, that's a really cool thing that it's gated style focused reverb. Yeah, I would check it out for sure. Simmons Octopad, yeah. Oh, there's that uh, awesome laser. This is a great clap, by the way. I'm just sort of jumping through these. Let's tune this down. That's where I would have it, you know, like a real, for like a mid-tempo banger, like, you know, just, yeah, just awesome. It's interesting how there's actually like a little tail on that, so we could kill that with the uh, gate, right? If we want to have it really tight, like just for, you know, short little percussive stuff. Yeah, super cool. Moving right along here. There's that, I couldn't tell if it was a snapping finger or a wood block type of sound. Ah, we have reached the famous bass line. So again, this is where you could, when in the or intro, I had it on a few different pads and tune them differently, but. Right, you could do, sequence out with that an entire chromatic baseline for EBM music for sure, um, which is super neat. What else do we have in here? So enter, going back to this. Oh, we've got a higher one. I didn't realize there was multiple. So we've kind of got like a low one and a high one. So we could take that one and tune it up higher, you know, for some Seinfeld action. And if you wanted to go as low as that, that's actually pretty gangster because it's got a little more pop on it. 
And you could hear that it didn't cut off those samples as I re-triggered them, which a lot of drum machines would because it has that extra polyphony. Yeah, that's right. Ah, the orchestra sample. Sorry, I have to detune each one of these, but I just want to know. I don't know that I think it's the best. A snap because I think there is a section little hit in it. A second little hit in it. Yeah. I agree. I agree. And now we got a higher one too. We can hear that one side. It's got like a little smack on it. You really hear the grittiness on that. It's so good. I think it sounds really uh, close. Like, like really good. Timpani. And then we're back to the trigger one. I want to go back to the bass line real quick. And let me go into real quick here. Will you guys indulge me for a minute? I'm going to turn my K1 on. And I just want to see over here. I'm, I'm in the darkness. And let's see what we have here. Let's see. Two, four, five. I know it was quick. It was in the beginning here. Come on. I know there was a fucking... Here's the bass line. So I'm playing... You can hear how, how gritty that is, right? That's an F on the Kawhi K1. Is that F? Let's try the other one. That's the acoustic bass. No, it's slightly different, isn't it? That's the K1 bass, and this is the R53. So even though they came from Kauai around the same time, they are not exactly the same. R&B, New Jack, that's the phrase I was looking for. That's the, uh, uh, definitely the sound. I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. Woo. Um, Autumn, have a great night. Thank you for hanging out with us. I appreciate that golden skull you got next to your name. Thank you very much. Um, very affordable way to get a similar sound, yeah. So... I think I've covered most of that. Um, let me go ahead and just go back. Let's create a really badass user kit, right? So we're going to go to pad one. And I actually want to use the rock drums because I thought they were more badass um, for sure. <laughs> um, let's go into pads and go to a user kit here and go to the pad and then let's set it up for a beat okay we all like this one right all we have to do is tune it down I think that's where it slaps the hardest right okay pad two we can pick the sound here. This one is stupid. The amount of attack on that is crazy, but I like this big gated snare sound. So again, let's tune it down. Right, somewhere around there. And then we'll gate it so it's a little less washy. There we go. Gangster. Yeah, so this is good. This is a pretty good. So we've got tambourine. 
hi hats china china and then over here we got the crash so right rick white yes down tuned is amazing so now that we've got a drum kit we like can i turn the uh level up on that Let's turn that up a little. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. All right. Um, now that we have that, we can go to, uh, let's go to call pattern. How do I get out of here? Nope. Come on. Chill. <laughs> call pattern zero, zero, right? So I've got that up there. I'm going to hit erase. That's what I programmed at the beginning of the stream. Erase pattern zero, zero, all. You can erase just one instrument part. So the... The thing that's weird is that the patterns 0 through 49 are all user. So this is where we could go in and remove just the hi-hats, just delete them out of the pattern if we wanted to. But the problem with that is you can't do that to the preset patterns. So for better or worse, that's what it is, right? Um, but I'm going to go ahead and press enter, and it's been executed, which is perfect. So there's nothing there. We go to real-time record, new pattern 00, zero right? So we want to do that. I'll hit enter. Bar. Now this for me is the biggest thing because I like two bar patterns at minimum, sometimes four bar. Two bars, a good mixture of your real-time recording, um, but you've also got a little bit of, uh, how do I say, like four bars, it can be hard to hit the pattern perfectly every time. And with this, if I fuck something up, you could go and edit just and remove one part of it, I guess, if it was complicated enough. I wish it had that Sakuachi. Yes. Um, but for me, uh, two bars is kind of the, oops, see how the, the up and down increments by uh, 10? So I just need two bars, right? That's kind of like the, the sweet spot. And then four, four is fine. So this is the time signature. We move on to EC or error correction. So that's 116th. You can actually adjust this to being like 164th or something like that. So let's see what we could do. Um, we can increase that to 196. So that's basically unquantized. It's not technically unquantized because it's still going to try to fit it in there, but it's a pretty, pretty unquantized. And then um, the metronome's 1-4, right? So it's pop, 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 pop. Yeah. Can you basically live loop on it playing one at a time? Yes. I will try that now, I think, <laughs> if I'm good. Okay. Uh, enter. So now we're ready to record a new pattern. Now, we could get to the tempo. If we hit tempo here, we actually have a tap button, which is here. So we could either adjust it, just like we were before, or we could tap. So if I want to do like, you know... It looks like I'm hanging around 103 is the beat that I have in my stupid brain, right? So that's a good thing to have. We'll hit that real time. So it says real time record new pattern. Now, when I hit start, it's going to start the metronome and it's going to show us where we're at in the bar, right? So it's going to do four hits for the first bar and four hits for the second bar. And you'll see it on the screen here. So we've got a total of two bars in this pattern. We're on bar one, and now we're on bar two, which can be good because you want to make sure you sort of start on uh, bar one, right? Because otherwise, when you go back to play this pattern, you'll be halfway through, right? Something to think about that I learned the hard way. Let me finish this absinthe off before I give this a shot. Alcohol will help. It helps the rest of my problems. One. So I'm going to wait here, two, three, four. Now we've got that looped in, so we're going to do it one at a time. There we go. Just we just need that one, right? I'm trying to 
trying to think about what the beat of um, Down In It by Nine Inch Nails is actually. But anyways, we'll just try a big one. Oh! Just that fucking machine gun to the chest. Oh, it's so good. Okay. That's gangster. Now, we could overdub this pattern, right? So it says real dub the pattern. That means if we add anything, we'll get there. Why don't we copy um, pattern 00... I'm sorry, zero, zero, to pattern one, right? And that will go to one? I don't know how to copy things, so we'll see what happens. Ready. Okay, so if we call pattern one, or zero, zero, we should hear what we just had. Yes, you sh absolutely should in that XD5. I've really thought about, like, when I bought this um, dub, I was like, I should get one of those. We may have talked about this in the beginning, but the talk of how this is basically an urban legend. Um, is there any chance this is a well-constructed fake that someone made for kicks? It crossed my mind, to be honest. Um, Charles Maines, welcome to the stream. Greatly underrated. Um, Cabaret Voltaire vibes going for sure. Um, if it's a fake, it is the greatest fake of all time. And people have rumored about it but i mean all you'd have to do i guess is do some sort of um basically what the mods are you usually have to drill a hole and put a little uh switcher on the front like a little knob and then that swaps the eproms so hypothetically you could do that inside but i think it's real and you'd have to change this up top here because it doesn't have this exact look um but that'd be hilarious if it was anyways let's go to call pattern and see if pattern one is the same Did you see what happened there? That's crazy. All stored in one pattern. That's insane. So, what, well, stop. Um, for some reason, I'm used to tapping it twice. Um, so, what occurred there is when I copied it, it was like A plus B equals C. So, I guess you could stack patterns just by going like pattern five and pattern nine become pattern 11 or whatever. So, it added those. So, let's go ahead and just uh, go back. Let's erase pattern one, all, enter, executed. It's gone. Call pattern two, copy pattern one, and then just go to pattern. So, I think we can leave that blank and copy that pattern zero to pattern one. I, I misspoke there. And then let's see how that sounds now. Okay. Pattern zero should be our first beat, and so should pattern one. Okay, it's the same. Now that we're on pattern one, if I go to real-time record, it's dub pattern. So if I play it, now if I add anything, you can see it's recording. And you can hear the metronome in the background, just in case. Let's see, okay. I want to make sure. There we go. So now we have like a little fill in there that we could use. So now, between those two, I want to take it just call pattern. We can kind of go back and forth between those. And now we can have a variety. Right? And so that's how you can make a beat or even a live set using just this. So. Zazilla the Great says, if I understand the R53 has all the ROMs while a simple R50 doesn't. That's correct. So a R100 or R50 or an R50E all have one ROM a piece and each ROM is different, but you could swap them out. So you could hypothetically take an R100 ROM and put it into an R50 and get those drum sounds. But otherwise, the patterns and, like I said, all the parameters are stored. Um, it doesn't save anything to the EPROM. It's just the sounds. 
what's so cool about this and a lot of people nowadays modify R100s and r 50 so they can have a, a switcher that lets them swap between the ROMs. Um, but you can't mix the sounds anyways. The way this one works is you just turn it off, hold a pad down, and then turn it back on and you get that ROM. And what's also super cool is people have gone ahead and made other EP ROMs, like for instance from the Yamaha RY30 and the Akai something or another and the uh, the 12,000 and stuff like that, famous drum machines, the emulator. They're EPROMs made with those samples on it, and so you can use those, but get sort of that gritty 12-bit texture of the R50. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think I've more or less covered everything about this. Um, I ride Harleys, how's it going? Um, they are from Japan though. Yes, so this is a Japan-only release, and honestly, I didn't know it existed. I, I thought it was a... a a myth or a rumor because I'd never seen one on reverb or anything like that but they do in fact exist and they're super cool and I just love the fact that it's still like that clean thing although if because these are so rare you're, you're depending on when you watch this video it, there may be none available on reverb or eBay in which case you could always buy I think it's like a hundred bucks a modifying kit for an R100 or an R50 and then get basically the same result just by twisting a knob. The differences between the two, the biggest is the velocity sensitivity and the number of pads. So the R100 has velocity sensitivity, but has less pads. And the R50, 50E and 53 have uh, 10 pads. I think I said eight earlier in the stream. That's obviously 10 pads, um, but they don't have velocity, but you can accent them using the accent knob. Um, so yeah, just found an R50 at 180 euros. Yeah, so the R50s are out there. You can definitely get them. Um, yeah. Um, Zozilla says, oh, I thought you had three at the same time on the, on the 53. So you have to choose one. Which one am I on now? Right now I've been on the, uh, R100 rock drum EPROM. Um, so that's pad two on this. Pad one was the R50E, which is the one that's famous for industrial music, but it could also do new wavy type stuff too. Um, about to disappear like the SY99 did. Yes, uh, Ed from Earth, how's it going, my friend? Uh, and then it's got the jazz samples from just the standard R50 um, on pad three. But again, if you buy one of these, you can buy the Eproms. They're like 30 bucks on eBay and swap in whatever sounds you want, which is super, super cool. I'm probably going to keep the rock and electronic kits, but swap in uh, whatever, whatever other samples I like, um, you know, and try to kind of set this up so it's got all my favorite sounds in it. I was impressed by the rock drums. To me, the rock drums were almost more industrial because they had that like heavy attack slap you know, just insanity. So, um, yeah, I'm super impressed by this thing. And like I said earlier, I am now committed to it, uh, that I'm going to sample this thing and make it available to you guys as one shots. Um, we'll do them in wave format, keep them in mono, but we'll make them good samples. That way you guys can use them. Um, so you can't have several samples from several ROMs at the same time. That's correct. You cannot. I suppose you could make your own EPROM, but, you know, whoa, these things only have so many samples anyways. Microphone is running away. Um, yeah, so. When did the R50 come out? I think it was 1986. Let me just double check that real quick for you. R50. What year was that? Uh, 87, and then the R100 was when um oh 87 as well maybe the r uh 50 came out afterwards so that's what i'm seeing right now i could be wrong i always try to look up the dates beforehand um but yeah i can make machine kits if you need help i appreciate that um like i said i i'm uh if you want to make some kits we can upload them uh to the members section of the channel um but we will uh, we will see about that. So, 
That DSS-1 for 300 is still sitting on Craigslist. You should definitely grab it. Yeah, DSS-1 is really awesome. I'm excited for Rob from Retroactive to hopefully get the DSS-1 programmer made this year. That would be a big deal. As far as making that synth, uh, I mean, honestly, some of the tips you guys gave me were enough to make it awesome, like that real-time filter thing by using the joystick. That was awesome. Um, so, fun drumming fact, Dave Grohl has said that he stole all of his drum patterns for Nirvana songs from disco drummers. Yeah, that's funny, but I believe it. And also, by the way, so have a million other people. I mean, it's there's only so many famous, great drum beats that work, you know? I agree, I ride Harleys. It's the type of thing that is just, I don't know what it is about, like, nostalgic sounds because I didn't I wasn't alive when this came out right I didn't grow up listening to industrial music but there's something about that like sweet spot between not too grainy and trashed but not too clean when it comes to vintage digital and this is right there kind of that mid to late 80s section is where it gets really good once you get all the way and like the SY99 versus the uh, SY77 almost might be there where you've got those 16-bit samples versus the 12. Part of me is wishing I'd gone with the 77 just because I think a, it could benefit from a little grit. SY99 sounds so fucking clean, but that's 91 versus 89, right? So that's the difference there. Um, you were like six, yeah. So, you know, that's a thing. Age is fucked up. Just found one that says R53, contains the three. Yes, acoustic, electronic, and jazz. Is acoustic the rock kit? Yes, it is. Um, you do not have to. So if it's a real R53, that has all three on it. So that's awesome. Like I said, it's been years of me looking at these things, and I've never seen them. And you know what's funny is I thought I saw one earlier today when I was perusing. So like a fucking crack addict on Reverb.com, just looking through stuff. So uh, yeah. I think this is a super cool instrument, and I know some of you guys are like me, that you love that early industrial EBM music, and to me, this just takes me there. It's not that that's the only genre you could use this for. You could use it for a lot of stuff, electro, all sorts of things, but for me, this takes me right into the territory where I feel very happy. Um, for other people, maybe not so much. You know, this could be a little too harsh and gritty they might prefer the sound of an analog drum machine and that's super cool too i like i'm not like i don't need the 909 the 909 snare is great but like i don't go for those sounds maybe i do maybe i use like the hi-hats and stuff and the snare but that's just not like my go-to i like these really snappy gritty, slightly distorted, gated, like in your face, nasty drum samples, especially when they're down tuned. I, I think this thing's just great. And like I said, I really want to hear how the RY30 sounds sound through this, right? Where you get those like, you get that extra little bit from it. So yeah. Yeah, interesting quantization options. Options. I definitely did not cover everything this stream. I just like keeping the streams to about two hours. And I felt like that was a good place to stop where it's like an intro to this thing. Like hopefully if you watch the stream this far, you're like, okay, I've kind of got an idea of what's going on here. Um, it's always what I'm trying to do with the stream. Sometimes we get a little bit more in depth like with the Roland D50, but um, for this, I felt like this is about right. Um, you know you're a reverb crack addict when you don't even bother with your feed. You just go to listed. Yeah, for sure. Lindrum, I believe there's a version for that too. Um, super neat. Pattern merging. Yeah, so that's what I kind of stumbled into where I was able to copy two patterns into one. And they were using completely different drum sounds and everything. It was, I mean, it was actually intense. I was, I was not expecting that, how um, powerful that is. Like I said, there's a whole song mode. I didn't go into step recording because... Honestly, it's not like what I'm comfortable with. By the time I'm step recording, I'd rather just be using like a MIDI roll in a DAW. Like I'm not the best with that. I'd rather just like see it in front of me. Doing it in sort of like this archaic way is not my thing as much, but but it is cool. Um, so anyways, with that, guys, I'm Vulture Culture. I wanted to uh, shout out real quick 
all of the members we have because we've got a bunch. I'm going to just do them in order um, from the oldest to the newest. Uh, so we'll start with our gold skull members, which means they've been members for six months or longer. That's Anna, Autumn, and Nikki. Thank you guys so much for being amazing and for the support. Moving on to our silver members, we've got Dubstation Zero, Andy Fields, the Marathon Monster, Vulture Mom, Aquatic Borealis, the Homie, Tiberian Fiend, Romex King, 40 Thieves, Ryan Shelf, Jackie Motherfucking Daggers, and Gabriel Binda. Thank you very much. Oh, we got some more Nickel. <laughs> Nickel. <laughs> Nicole. Uh, Vulture Cousin, Jim Abbey, and then moving on to our newest members. I want to say a big shout out to all of our new members. Thank you for joining the Vulture Culture. We've got Michael Mays, Watchy Machine, Tony Argo, and is oh this one's interesting. Asan Bathia Mall. Asan Bathia Mall. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Whoever you are out there. If I haven't said hi to you, because some of those are people who don't hang out in the chat every week. You guys are fucking awesome. I really appreciate you guys helping me make this weird little dream of mine a reality. You guys are amazing. And it's so much fun hanging out with everybody every week. And yeah, it's just great. Next week, we're going to be staying in vintage digital Kawhi land. Although with some analog motherfucking filters, we're going to be checking out, in theory, the Kawhi K3 and some of the deeper additive synthesis that synth can do, but it's a hybrid synth, so it's also got the analog SSM filters from synths like the Prophet 5, the PVG Wave, and the Korg Poly 6. So it's got probably the best filters in the room. Um, also, probably the synth I feel most guilty about having on the channel because I think I'm singing the praises of the K3, potentially one, one of the loudest up there with like Espen Croft. Of course, he's much, much bigger than me. Um, but when I did my video on the K3 like a year ago, um, they were selling for like 300 bucks. They're now all like 900 plus. So they've had like 200% inflation since then. And I'm like afraid that maybe I contributed to that. So uh yeah, and that, going back to the Deluge Aquatic, that's basically what it's like, like a hands-on piano roll. Super cool. Uh, first time watching live. It's four... Uh, is that almost five o'clock in the morning in France now? Whew. Gotta get some sleep. Ed, thank you for being awesome. Um, I'm glad that you enjoyed it, Zozilla. And um, let's go. Anyways, guys. Oh, Walter says, what's the K-Synth to get? Hmm... That's going to be dependent. I, I always have to answer that question. I feel bad. I, I know what people want me to say is this is the one to get. I have to give you the use cases for what you're looking for. Um, so if you want something that's like a hybrid synth, obviously it should be the K3, right? Because the K3 can sound amazing and gorgeous and basically give you the best of both worlds, like the analog synth world because it has that profit five filter um but then it's also got really great wavetables so it can, can it can sound like a dx7 a bit or kind of like the dw8000 thing the k1 is probably the all-time uh budget vintage digital synth out there you can get them for usually like 200 plus shipping and i think it sounds great it's sort of like a roland d50 but it's like grainier and dirtier because of the 8-bit samples. And it just, I think it sounds great because I like that nostalgic vintage digital sound. If you want it to sound hi-fi like a JD-800 or an SY-99, it is not going to do that. It's going to sound really uh, dark and gritty. Um, if you do want that hi-fi sound, then it would be the Kawhi K4. Um, those go for like 400 and they sound very like Rompler-esque, sort of like big ambient digital stuff, which I love that sound too, so I want to get one of those at some point. The K5 is their first additive synth. Because it doesn't have any controls though, unfortunately, although the synthesis is additive, it's going to essentially be kind of like a Rompler, and that was, a sen that was my problem with the K5000S, which I used to have, the most expensive of all their synths, um, is because 
it's so hard to create an interface that's inviting to get into additive. I just never, you know, could even get into it because it's just too complicated. So for a deep programmer, like someone who wants to dive into a synth, you know, I, I don't have a lot of time, but if you've got some time and you're like, I want to really learn one of the, probably the most powerful digital synth of all time, it would be the Kawhi K5000S. And then if you just want that type of sound, I would lean more towards like a K4 than even the K5, because with the reduced harmonics of the K5, you get a little bit of that darker thing, which for me is sometimes good with additive, but not always. So I don't know. What the fuck is up? The Romex King, King is here. Um, definitely contributed to the 8080 prices um, for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And of course, you could do all of these with the UVI uh, Kawhi Legacy stuff that's going on because it's got all of those synths in there, uh, except for the 5000S. Yo, Daniel Perkins, thank you for subscribing. Um, so yeah, with that, thank you to everybody who comes every week to hang out with me. Next week, Kawhi K3. It would be a great thing to check that out. That's definitely... I don't know. For me, the K3 is the synth that's worth... If you want to spend $1,000 on a synth, the K3 is really great. Um, for some reason, like, when I started this whole synth thing, it seemed like everybody was like, the K3 sucks, get a DW8000 or an SQ80. Now, both of those synths are great, but I think the K3 is fucking awesome. And I think all of those people who said that were wrong. Like, it's great. So, anyways, uh, nothing wrong with creeping, lurking in the background. Oh, yes, and of course, the analogs. I forgot about that, the SX240. So, I have no experience with the really expensive analog synths they put out. The thing is that... Um, Oh, that's co cool, Machine Storm. I'm going to have to check that out. The SX series, so it's the uh, 210 and the 240, were really created by Tysco, which is a company that Kawhi bought, and they sold them. And they were making analog synths before. And they're sort of Juno-esque in that you either get, like, two oscillators or one plus a sub. For me, it's a hard sell just because I've got so many synths that sort of meet that bill so it's like do i need another one especially if it's not one knob per function it's got the um sort of the same thing as the kawaii k3 where you've got like an alpha dial but you've got the button so you can one parameter per function so it's still pretty fast much faster than alpha juno without a retroactive controller um but uh yeah i mean for me it's the k3 i guess walter so but I don't have the, I can't say that not to the SX240 because it could be amazing, but I've never had one. So, um, yeah. Anyways, let's uh, call it there for the night. Thank you guys so much for being the homies. I'm Vulture Culture. I hope you guys all have a great week and uh, love and light, bitches. <laughs>